overtime. All right, welcome back to Overtime Arcade. I'm Charlie, and this is part six of our Ms. Pac-Man restoration project. Now, if you've been following previous videos, you know that we've done a ton of work for this project so far. Uh, what have we done? Well, we've uh, brought this uh, transformer assembly back to life, got it working well. Uh, we addressed some issues with the game PCB, got that working properly. We rebuilt this Geo7 monitor that we're going to use in our game. Uh, and those are really the three big components in any arcade video game machine. Power, game logic board, and monitor. Um, so we've got the, the major stuff all working properly. We also stripped all the original black paint, or all the black paint that a former owner had uh, painted on top of the original artwork on the cabinet. And unfortunately, you know, the original artwork is there, but it's, it's damaged beyond the point of touching up and, and so bad that I'm not going to be able to live with it as it is. So what we're going to have to do is completely re-stencil this artwork, repaint, uh, redo the old stencils to really get it back to an acceptable, an acceptable state. Um, but I don't want to paint when it's cold outside, and it's getting to be the cold part of the year out here in Virginia, and uh, we're going to have to wait until it warms back up again before we do a, a lot of painting like that. Um, so, you know, this project is going to take a bit of a hiatus, um, but before we start digging into the next project, there are some, I guess, loose ends that I want to uh, uh, tidy up uh, in this video, uh, including uh, getting the control panel put back together the right way. We've got to do some stuff with the, uh, with the coin door. And also, if you remember in the last video when we got the monitor up and running, um, you know, I rebuilt it, did a, a new flyback, put a new flyback in, installed the cap kit, etc. Uh, and we got it up and running and we got a picture, but I sort of cut it off right there. Uh, and whenever you do that kind of work to a monitor, you know, there's a couple of adjustments that you really need to make. You want to adjust the B plus voltage, which is one of the main you know, voltages that a monitor chest uses. Uh, and then from there, you can make all of your color adjustments and that sort of thing. Um, so one of the things I want to do in this video is set that B plus a, a voltage, adjust that B plus voltage, make sure it's, it's locked in properly. Um, so we're kind of set up to do that here. Um, you know, I've got the monitor hooked back up to the uh, transformer assembly like we had it before. I've got our TPG test pattern generator from Crafty and Mech plugged in here to get an image on the screen. Um, the way you test the B plus voltage is with your multimeter set to DC volts, uh, and you hook up the black lead uh, from the multimeter uh, to chassis ground, right to the chassis frame is fine, so we have that here. And then you want to take the red lead and attach it to um, this large ceramic capacitor on the left side of the monitor chassis, and there's a, you can't quite see it, there's a white wire coming out of this side and I've got the red lead of my multimeter hooked up to that side of the, uh, that large ceramic capacitor. That's where you can test the B plus voltage. Now, every monitor is gonna be a little bit different. Some of them have dedicated uh, test points for B plus, uh, but this is how you do it on a Geo7, or at least according to uh, Peter's website, arcadepartsandrepair.com, has some great info. Uh, and you know we'll be able to make adjustments. There is a, uh, a vertical um, a, a potentiometer uh, uh, that we can make adjustments to the B plus uh, to turn it up and down as necessary. So I've got everything plugged in ready to go. I'm going to turn my multimeter on and set it to DC volts. I'm going to turn my test pattern generator on. I've got the transformer assembly plugged in and all I have to do is turn on this interlock switch. I hear the buzz of the HV, the monitor starting to warm up. Right off the bat we see that our initial voltage reading is 115.5 DC volts. Uh, which is a little bit low. Like I said, it, each monitor is a little bit different. The B plus on a Geo7 is supposed to be uh, 120 volts, so that's a little low. Um, but we're going to let this warm up for at least you know 15 or 20 minutes before we make any adjustments. It's important to do that. Uh, I will, however, switch the screen to something moving just to minimize burn, although this monitor already has a, a fair amount of burn. I got my TV adjustment tools ready to go. Um, so we're gonna let that go for a good, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes until it warms up and then it looks like we'll have to uh, turn up the B plus voltage just a little bit. So in the meantime, we'll turn our attention uh, over here to our 
um, control panels first. So if you remember, uh, we had uh, two control panels that we can work with here. Uh, this one on the left uh, was the one that was originally on uh, the game when I got it. Obviously the control panel overlay is totally trashed. Uh, we're not gonna be able to live with that, uh, but it is complete. It does have the joystick and the buttons. I picked up this other uh, control panel uh, in a parts lot. It's missing the buttons. It does have the joystick. Uh, and there is a little bit of damage to the control panel overlay, but I would say it's about, you know, 98% intact. Um, so we're going to use this control panel with this control panel overlay. Obviously, we'll clean it up a little bit. Uh, I need to transfer the buttons over um, from the original to this new one. And a couple of other things. If you look on the back side here, um, you'll notice uh, that the wiring harness uh, for this control panel, the one that was on my machine, is intact. We've got the leaf switches, everything sort of all there. Um, but on this side, uh, there's a bunch of wires that have been cut. You know, obviously, the parts for the, uh, uh, the buttons have been cut. So um, I think what we're going to do is transfer ev all the parts from uh, this one over to this one. Uh, maybe there are some bits and pieces we can choose. You know, we'll take a look at how the grommet is on either one and, and pick the best one, uh, that sort of thing, different odds and ends. And there's also the middle sort of bracket um, uh, is present on the one on the control panel that was in our cabinet but is missing from this one. So we'll swap that over too. Uh, and then we'll give everything sort of a good scrubbing um, to the point where we'll be able to use it in the cabinet. So why don't I start by getting a good camera angle and uh, we can rip some of these parts off of the cabinet. Ah, one thing I forgot to do. <laughs> So you can't just pull uh, the joystick off, right? Because obviously uh, the top of the joystick ball is uh, too big to fit through uh, uh, the hole in the control panel. So you actually have to take apart the joystick in order to um, you know, get the joystick assembly off of the control panel. If you can see here, there's this little C-clip or E-clip. I don't know what the difference is between them. Um, and you gotta pull that and the whole joystick will then come apart. So I've got my needle nose pliers here. I'm just gonna come in, grab this thing, and be careful because it'll go flying across the room if you let go of it. All right. Here we go. So there's our oh, C clip. And then it should just the joystick should just come apart. There we go. So there's our joystick. Uh, doesn't look too bad, but like I said, we'll pick our best one uh, between the two. And now the rest of that assembly will come out. We got our dust washer, put that anywhere. Nice and dirty, nasty. And uh, yeah, we'll take a look at the, the grommet here and see uh, which of these parts is in best condition for us to keep. Uh, but like I said, this is the control panel we're gonna use and the control panel overlay. So we'll put that one aside for now. Let me grab a little cup just to put all these loose parts into so I don't lose them. All right, put that over here. And there's this cut grounding strap that we're gonna have to figure out something to do um, to recreate that uh, when we hook everything back up. So let's come over here, start taking our second one apart. So obviously the joystick will come apart the same way. Why don't we do that real quick? So obviously with this one, we do have uh, the buttons still in this game or in this uh, control panel. And it's they have these little PAL nuts. Um, wow, I can actually just do that with my hand. Usually you gotta use channel locks or something to disconnect that. Uh, so we'll move that out of the way. And uh, now it should just, there we go, come off like that. Let's see if this other one's hand tight. Kind of. Oh, man. Actually, before I rip my skin off, let me get my channel locks and just gently grab these just to get them going. There we go. Take that off, put it in the cup. And this should come right off. All right. And uh, let's see. Here we 
go. You just pop out. Here we have some dirty but functioning old uh, buttons. Uh, we can clean these up with simple grain. Um, usually what you can do, um, maybe I'll do this off camera, you just disassemble them. These have a couple of C-clips on them as well. Uh, if you can see that right there. Um, you can take these apart, drop them in some simple grain to clean them up. But uh, I think for now, uh, for expediency in the video, uh, we'll just kind of use them as is. Might be a little bit gross, but um, you know, one of the things I want to do is by the end of this video, if I can get everything working, uh, I want to hook up the uh, everything, hook up the coin door, hook up the control panel, hook up the game PCB, and try to play uh, a quick game of, of Miss Pac-Man if we can. So, all right, let's just come back in here and take this joystick assembly off. All right, so there's our other joystick assembly. That needs to be cleaned up as well. And uh, I also wanted to, oh, there's our dust washer. And I also wanted to take off um, this metal bracket to transfer it over. All right, so there's our old control panel, uh, dirty. Uh, no real need to clean this right now. Uh, one other thing I noticed that there's this um, sort of gasket, I guess, uh, piece. I think this is designed to sit on top of the, um, and it goes across. It's designed to sit on top of the, uh, the glass marquee and preventing the metal from making contact with the glass and potentially scratching it, breaking it, uh, what have you. Um, the other one sort of has had it completely ripped off. I don't have a replacement uh, for this right now. I'll have to get some, um, but we're not going to be connecting uh, we're not going to be putting this into the, the, the cabinet just yet or putting the marquee in, so uh, we don't have to worry about that for now. So I guess right here I can start by uh, just cleaning up. Just cleaning up this. I'm going to use some paper towels and some simple green and just uh, wipe this sucker down. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that just for now. Uh, really just kind of a basic scrub down. Um, there's kind of some leftover adhesive here. Uh, I think what I'll do is when I'm ready to install this in the cabinet and I put a new gasket on, I'll take some goof off or goo gone and I'll kind of strip all that off. Uh, we've got a quality control inspection sticker. Let's see if you can see it. it says inspector 159. Is that what that says? Inspector 159. So I tried to keep that, or keep from removing that, and we did okay there. So let's just uh, take a quick swipe on this side. We're not trying to get it perfect for now, but just so that we can work with it a little bit here. And um, for the actual control panel overlay itself, um, what I want to do is hit that with gently with a magic eraser. Um, essentially, that works as very fine grit sandpaper, and be careful because there are some exposed screws underneath. Um, that works kind of as a, a fine grit sandpaper and really kind of strips the um, top layer of the artwork, uh, but it does it gently enough to just sort of, you know, refresh uh, the colors without really stripping it too bad. So these little things, you know, live up to their name of magic eraser. So you don't want to go too much. You see, starting to take that grime off. And these things do start to disintegrate on you, but uh, that's how you know they're working.
How does that look? A lot better than before. Let's see if there's any any parts we have to go over again. Maybe just a little bit right here. Hit that real quick. How about that? I'd say that looks pretty darn good. You know, you can barely kind of see, you know, a little chunk missing there. Where's the other piece that's missing? I lost. Oh, kind of just a little really minor gouge there. Yeah, uh, this looks pretty, pretty good if I just say so myself. I thought there was another piece, another chunk missing, but you're just seeing it right there in the corner, right there. Uh, it's kind of got some dings, got some whatever, but uh, yeah, I'm very happy with that. And that's, that's what we're going to ride with. All right, so before we put everything back in, or uh, the, the joystick and the buttons back in, let's turn our, whoa, whoa. Let's turn our focus back towards the monitor. As you can see, test pattern generator is still rolling. Uh, that color issue is not anything going on here. Um, that's only showing up on the on the camera. If we come back, our let's see if you can see that. Yeah, our our uh, B plus voltage reading. There we go. 115.6. Um, so we are going to want to turn that up to uh, 120. And let me double check my cheat sheet. I'm almost positive it's 120. Yeah, that should be 120. Yeah, we'll adjust the B plus voltage at R909. All right, let's see if this, let's see if this one will do the trick. Come in here. I'm going to try to do this with the camera in hand. Pray for me. All right. That vertical pot right there is the one that we want. Let's see if I can come in here without touching anything. All right. We're already got movement. Oh. Kind of all over the place with that pot. Let me do this without holding two things at once, including a, a camera by <laughs> the high voltage on the monitor. Let's do this. So you should be able to see, see that. Let's see. All right. Here we go. Can I see? Hmm. There we go. One nineteen point nine. <laughs> Do I dare try adjusting it that tiny bit more? Let's see if we can get it perfect. Look at that. 120 on the nose, and uh, still have a good image on the screen. Like I said, pay no attention to this pink sort of stuff, or even the retrace lines. So I guess I can kind of see the retrace lines. So, uh, okay, let's make some adjustments to this monitor. So we'll come over here. I'll set up so that you'll be able to see the screen as I make these adjustments. All right, and let me show you what I'm gonna do. So uh, I, again, always follow a cheat sheet when I'm uh, adjusting these pots. Um, some of the controls are on the flyback, really the, the screen, which controls the brightness, that pot, uh, and focus, which obviously controls the focus of the picture. Um, there's a bunch of 
uh, and every monitor is a little bit different. There's a bunch of pots, if you can see them sort of lined up right there, those sort of donut looking things sticking up. Those really control um, geometry of the image, uh, frequency, linearity, centering, um, that sort of stuff. Uh, those are relatively okay right now. Um, and then we have color pots uh, here. I think these are the cutoffs on this side for RGB. And then there are red and green um, drives on uh, this side. You can kind of see them there, right? Uh, not one for blue, because blue is sort of the, uh, the reference uh, color. So we'll set this up here so you can see the screen while I do this. Um, I'm going to turn the house lights down, or the garage overhead lights. And uh, let me see what I can do. I don't know if I can really get the camera to sort of get a good image of the screen. You get that. I guess that's not so bad. Okay, it looks a lot better in person than it does on camera. Uh, again, I'm going to consult my cheat sheet. I'll put a link in the notes below. Uh, this step-by-step -step cheat sheet that I like to use um, for monitor adjustments. Um, let's see. Uh, this website is called emphatic.se. Is that like the country code for Sweden, um, maybe? So... Uh, yeah, uh, ba, 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 ba. we want to first move to a uh, screen with lots of black. Uh, that's a pretty good one. Yeah, let me use that grid. Right there. All right. We're still locked in at 120 volts DC for B+. Maybe we have some geometry issues to contend with there. Uh, all right, so... Uh, just going through the directions. It's best to do these adjustments in a dark room, boot up to a screen with a, a nice test mode, for example, color bars or grid, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, make sure you have access to all the controls. I mean, you can do this inside of the cabinet, but you'll be reaching around uh, quite a bit. Um, set everything up, let the chassis warm up for 15 to 20 minutes, which we have. You wanna turn all of the RGB gain or drive pots all the way down. And on a G07, those are called drive. It's only for red and green and they're on the uh, left side of the neck board. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn those down. Let's see what that does. Drive pots are all the way down. Next step, oh, uh, put the brightness pot in the midnight or neutral uh, position. Yeah, let me just make sure I'm doing the right one here. So we don't have a brightness pot, we only have a screen pot. Uh, some monitors have Let's see, we got focus on top and screen on the bottom. So some monitors have pots on the, on the game or on the, the chassis that control brightness or contrast separate from the, uh, the flyback. We've only got it on the flyback on the G07. Uh, we also now want to step the next step, turn the uh, RGB cutoff pots uh, to a neutral position. And on the G07, they are called cutoff, RGB cutoff, and they are on the right side of the neck board. So let me move those to a neutral position. Kind of in the midnight, 12 o'clock position for all three pots. That's pretty close. Look at all that red. Next we want to, and this is an important one, adjust the screen pot and the flyback until the screen is totally black. You wanna go just past the last trace of the grid. So we've got the screen pot, this controls the brightness, and you can see we're going down. And while I can't go past, I can't go past that last, that's with the screen all the way down, and blue is still way too high. So, and blue doesn't have, on the G07, blue doesn't have a drive pot. So let's mess with the, uh, the blue cutoff and see where we can get that. Huh. Well, that's interesting. 
with the screen all the way down, that screen higher and higher, that screen all the way down and we still have tons of blue on the, on the screen. I don't know what to make of that. What happens if we do these? Nothing really. Okay, anyhow, moving along. Turn each RGB cutoff until you see the black space around the white grid, turn the color you're adjusting and then turn it down until it's completely black again. That looks okay. All right, uh, adjust the drive controls until the grid is really white. Okay, well, maybe that's what we'll have some luck here. That looks a little green. That looks a little red. Uh, I'd say that looks pretty white. All right, moving along. Let's do move to the color bars screen. All right, here's our color bars and adjust each color's gain or drive until you get the brightest, sharpest setting. And again, we only have green and red drive on the uh, Geo 7. So let's take a look here. Look at that. Too much green, how's that? There's a lot of burn on this monitor too, which is throwing me off a little bit. Uh, but I see good color separation. Uh, again, you've got this rolling bar now, only on the camera. This isn't as white as it sort of seems uh, on, the, on the screen. I think I need to take some of that. Okay. Okay. That's looking okay. Again, the, the camera's not doing it much justice. Um, this is clearly cyan, even though you kind of can't see it. Blue, red, sort of magenta, green, turquoise, cyan, yellow, and white. Um, the camera's just not picking it up great. Uh, looks okay there, I guess. And uh, so that's kind of okay. Like I said, you can drive yourself nuts doing this forever. Let's adjust the Get that gray scale at the bottom looking good. All right, now we're in business. Okay, red's a little, a little high. That's looking pretty good. That is looking pretty, pretty good. Um, maybe the green needs a little bit of, a little bit of juice. How's that looking? I'd say pretty okay. I would like a little bit more pop out of the cyan. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, so I think our colors are looking pretty good and, and you can always, you know, things are gonna be a little bit different with the, when the game PCB is in as opposed to when the, um, the TPG, just, you know, things a little bit different. So we can always do some minute adjustments when the game is, the, the monitor is in the cabinet running on the game or the game is running on the screen. Uh, okay, and then we just need to adjust the focus. That's our last step. We'll come back to, well, let's look at all these beautiful colors. Like I said, I think that's pretty good. Let's get back to the grid. And now we can adjust our focus. We've got a tiny bit of convergence issues, but I'm not really gonna worry about that. I'd say that looks pretty good. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of red. Maybe this monitor could use a, uh, a rejuve. Um, you know, I think I want to adjust the horizontal centering a little bit. We can do that with our lights on though. 
And let's see. Put some light in here. Horizontal center. How's the vertical center? Vertical center is okay. Horizontal center, I want to move it that way a little bit. Um, and let me actually do this with the monitor off just because I don't want to move that jumper. And we're still locked in at 120 volts. All right. Let's move that this way. Sorry, right, back up. Okay, I mean the whole the whole screen is visible, so we'll have to live with that. I think I'm actually okay uh, with these adjustments. So uh, yeah, uh, maybe the vertical height needs a little a little tweaking. Let's see right here. That's not much different from before. <laughs> maybe we try that. Uh, Vertical linearity. That's what I want. Then I get some real convergence issues at the bottom with that. Anyhow, you know, like right down there. But these things are, it's a 42 year old monitor, so it's not going to be perfect. I do wish I could get it farther over that way. There might be um, some capacitor values I could change uh, to make that happen, but uh, and the camera's drifting a little bit. Um, but I think I'm okay with this uh, for right now. Like I said, we can make some more adjustments in the cabinet once everything is plugged back together. So let's make our way back now that I think the monitor is in good shape. At least the B plus is a uh, locked in, and um, you know uh, we've got some good colors. At least you know you really can't make many more adjustments until um, you know the game's actually running on the screen. So uh, okay, so we cleaned up our control panel. Let's. Um, Let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. This is the uh, the hacked up uh, um, joystick uh, assembly, and uh, okay. and this is the better one. I'm just looking at sort of the the relative difference in the grommet and everything, and I think they're about the same. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, let me get some canned air and blow this dust out. So we're not going to use this one for now. We'll just come in here with some canned air and blow off a lot of this stuff. Wait a second. No, this is the crappy one. What am I doing? I'm cleaning the crappy one. Huh. So we've got a little bit of rust here, um, some pitting, but not really where any, I guess there's some rust on the inside, not really anywhere where the joystick makes contact with anything. And if we wanted to, again, we could take some real time and go in here and disassemble everything and uh, completely, completely clean it up. I'm just gonna blast it a little bit more right here. But uh, this is going to be sitting out in the garage for a little bit anyway, so uh, no need to drive ourselves crazy. So uh, I think we can plug this back in. Yeah, there's still some grossness here, but um, I'll come back and clean this at some other point. Same thing with the, with the buttons, I guess. So what's the correct orientation? Let's plug this in. Oh, first, before we do that, ha! Ah. Let's get uh, this bottom bracket cleaned up a bit. That's not going to do much. 
Let's clean this off. Oh, that's gross. Some rust and grime in here. Yeah, if I really wanted to, man, I'd probably sand that grime off. But um, so let's mount these this bracket back in and. I think it goes like that. That makes sense. So we find those the right, the right bolts for that. And these bolts look okay. Uh, sorry, my hands are all dirty. I might come in at some point and uh, let's see, sand and um, repaint these. But for now, again, we're doing this quick and dirty to kind of make do. Well, I've got these out. Let's figure out what the best parts are. Like I said, these these look about the same. Pick that one, and we've got our pal nuts. Let's take a look at these joysticks. I don't see too much difference between them. Uh, this one's more textured than this one. But this is also rustier, so maybe we'll go with this one. Kind of picking the best parts here. So between the two dust washers, I think this one is in better shape. Bunch of other bracket or bolts here. Yeah, we're gonna have to refinish these all at some point, but for now, we'll just go with these. I really kind of want to get this all back together so I can, you know, play a game of Miss Pac Man. I'm about to leave on a trip, so I want to get a video out and, you know, show you guys the stuff working. So. All right, that's on, and uh, yeah, let's get the joystick back in place. Yeah, we're gonna wanna definitely refinish these at some point. We'll put them in the tumbler, clean them up, and then repaint them. Okay, now let's see. Uh, it will do the buttons. Uh, let me just give these a quick, a quick wipe down. Like I said, I'm gonna clean a lot of this up a lot better later on. And these pop in and there's a little, little sort of a notch there, or there's a notch in the control panel that the sort of two clips on either side, cleats, whatever you want to call them, kind of line up into so they don't rotate in there. So I'll put that in, grab our pal nut. Just hand tighten that for now. Same thing with this one. Okay, that looks fine. So the dust washer, <laughs> how do we get it in there now that we've, oh my goodness. Um, so this is gonna go in like that, go through here. And then the grommet will go on to this and then we'll clip that on. I need to get the, dust washer in there and I can't really do that. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was attach the, um, the ground strap and uh, the real part of the ground strap is still in the cabinet. So I grabbed an extra couple of pieces of ground strap from another um, Pac-Man harness that I have. So I guess I need to actually take this off. Let's 
So, dust, wa dust washer will go in like this. Grab, whoa, that collar flipped off. Okay, let me double check. Uh, one part goes to the top. All right, so this comes through like that. It needs to, so at least it comes through, grabs, goes to the dust washer, okay. Is that right? Yeah, okay. Okay, so that's good there. And this ground strap, I want to come through like this. And we've got to get the grommet on and our So we got that there. You see what I'm doing? Just trying to clip the C clip on without it flying across the room. Wish me luck. There we go. That wasn't so bad. Pretty good. Okay, uh, I'll put this aside. Move this out of the way. So I'm kind of happy with that for now. I think that's ready to be used for testing. In terms of the coin door, a couple things going on here. Obviously, we're going to need to restore this. Lots of surface rust. Uh, we're going to clean this up at some point. Sand it all down. Get the rust off. Repaint it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um. On the inside, uh, same deal. We've got the coin mechs. The coin lights aren't the same. One of them looks like it's probably burnt out. Uh, coin mechs are there. Coin switches are there. Uh, I threw a, I think this might have been the actual broken original uh, lock that came with the cabinet just so that I could get the um, uh, it's called, it says here the vibration switch. It's the slam switch. Get that installed. I think we're okay. A little bit dirty. That's where we'll mount the um, uh, grounding strap. But uh, yeah, let me get this all plugged up. Let me go grab the, the game PCB and uh, we'll set everything up for testing. Okay, I think we've got everything uh, set up and ready for testing. Um, I think I've got everything set up, everything grounded properly. Obviously the transformer assembly there, power going to the monitor and ground going to the monitor, video signal going to the monitor from the main chassis, which is plugged into the game PCB over here with the edge connector that we repaired previously. Um, I've got the coin door plugged in. Obviously the uh, coin counter is missing and therefore disconnected, but not too worried about that. Uh, that's grounded with the grounding strap. I uh, got the control panel plugged in here, connected to the main harness, and uh, the sort of grounding strap is daisy chained and goes into the transformer assembly there. Um, I even pulled the uh, speaker out of the monitor, uh, connected that up to the uh, speaker wires and grounding as well. So, <laughs> I'm kind of nervous, but I think we are ready to test this baby out. Um, we've seen most of the stuff working separately, um, but if all goes well, um, we're about to see me play a game of Miss Pac-Man right here.
one of the coin door lights is out. Okay, uh, we've got a vertical vertical sink issue. I think I got the test switch um, in the test position. Okay, um, okay, I can fix this. This is good. This is okay. Uh, let me reach across the camera and do this without uh, you seeing my backside. Okay, I messed with the adjustment pots on the monitor quite a bit, and uh, this is about as good as I can get the image right now. Uh, we've got some centering issues, and I, if I think back, I think I was having that issue with the other monitor when I was first testing out the game PCB. You can see that the side's got a curl here. I don't know if we need to do the sync mod. Uh, I've got to do a bit of research. You can even tell from the burn on the screen that the, we're off by you know, at least half an inch to the right and maybe three quarters of an inch too high. You can't even see the, the high score um, uh, uh, numbers up at the top. But um, we've got an image on the screen. Uh, so like I said, I got to figure out if this is a Geo 7 issue or if this is a, a board issue, but it's sort of working. So, uh, and I've heard some pops out of the uh, speaker, so I think the sound is working. Let's see if I can coin this up. There's one on the left side. Okay, so coin door is working. Uh, you heard the speaker. Um, let's start a game. Sounds working. Okay. All right, I can move in all four directions. And uh, this, like we said before, we've got a speed chip in this thing, which is why Miss Pac-Man is uh, down, down. Maybe I need a new grommet in here. It's a little loosey-goosey. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And hopefully you can hear it too. Um, the sounds are playing. It's kind of weird doing it at this angle. Okay, so it's working. Let me uh, die so I can test the uh, second player button. Okay, like I said, you can't see the high score at the top. Uh, all right, two players working. And just making sure the control is working right from player two. Okay, uh, well, what have we learned? Well. Uh, control panel is working, coin door is working for the most part. Uh, like I said, we've got a light out, but uh, <laughs> a bulb out, but that's no problem. Both coin mechs, at least the, the, the coin switch is working. Speaker's working, PCB's working, transformer assembly's working, and the monitor is working, but uh, I don't know what's going on with these adjustments. Uh, you know, it still has the original adjustment pots on the, the chassis. Maybe I need to replace those. Uh, but I'm going to do a bit of research uh, before we take uh, the next step here. And let's, let's get this. Let's see if that's it. Player one, game over. <laughs> So, uh, like I said, I'm gonna do some research and figure out if this is an issue with the monitor or with the game uh, PCB. There really aren't any adjustments that I can make uh, on the PCB. Uh, there is one potentiometer on the Ms. Pac-Man board right there, uh, which is the volume adjustment. But uh, I don't know, maybe there's a component on the board that's you know, slightly out of spec, who knows. 
or something going on um, with the monitor. Like I said, I think I had this issue um, with the other monitor, uh, the smaller 13 inch monitor when I was first testing the game PCB. I don't know. Like I said, I'm gonna have to look into this. If you have any ideas on something I can try or point me to something where uh, somebody's had an issue like this, uh, I'm all ears, leave me a comment down below. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I guess we're kind of making progress. Think of this as an integration test or a system test and uh, you know, partially passed. Um, so well, things are looking kind of promising. And uh, yeah, I think in the next video, we'll hopefully figure out what's going on with, with this issue. Um, and then we'll probably put the Ms. Pac-Man uh, on hiatus um, until it becomes warm enough to paint. Uh, like I said, we'll have to redo, the, uh, redo all the stencils and we'll want to um, you know, strip and repaint the coin door, get all the rust off. But other than that, and whatever this issue is, um, Miss Pac-Man is looking pretty good. Uh, we're, we're nearly done here, so uh, we might be transitioning soon to uh, kicking off a new restoration project that will be running in parallel, which should be a uh, Williams Joust, uh, which should be a lot of fun. So anyway, uh, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Charlie. Thanks for watching Overtime Arcade, and we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime! overtime.